the first time I saw WordPress, I said to myself, what can be so amazing about just a blogging platform? And that's what I was thinking until I found about custom post types. So today we will have a look at custom post types in WordPress. Understanding how custom post types work will give you a kind of superpower as a WordPress developer. Even better, it will make you a WordPress developer, not just some guy who sets up website by installing a whole bunch of plugins. But as the wise men say, with great power comes great responsibility. And here is when questions start to arise. Should you put your custom post type in a plugin, in a must use plugin, or should you put your custom post type in a theme? Or should you use a plugin that creates a custom post type for you? Or even how to create manually a custom post type? In this video, we will answer these questions and we'll show you how to create a new custom post type the right way. So what is a post type or even why they are called post types? Well, because in the beginning, WordPress was just a blogging platform. And the only thing that you could have done on WordPress was creating new posts, new blog articles, new stories, whatever you want to call them, they were just posts. But people wanted to use WordPress for more than just blogging. So we had then pages, pages like static pages, not blog articles. But if you look closely, you can see that even pages are a custom post type made by WordPress. Just have a look at this link now. WordPress comes out of the box with five custom post types already made for you. Those are post, pages, revision, attachment, and menus. You can see their documentation for more information about this. And they are called post types just because they stuck with the term post. But you can call a post whatever you want. For example, if you are building a portfolio site, you can call them projects. And in the project, you will have each individual project as a new post as a new project basically. Or for example, if you are building an e-commerce platform, you can have a custom post type for products, for coupons, for orders and so on. Or even if you are building an e-learning platform, you can have a custom post type for courses or for assignments. Basically, custom post types are a way to structure data on your website however you want. And it's because of the custom post types that we can have such amazing plugins like WooCommerce or LearnDash. Okay, but how to create a new custom post type? Well, let's go to the computer and see three ways in which you can create a new custom post type. The easy way, the hard way, and the pro way. Okay, so this is a local WordPress installation using local by Flywheel. And the first way we're gonna see how to do it the easy way. And the easy way is to use a plugin like custom post type UI or CTP UI. We're gonna go to plugins, add new plugin. And here we will go and search for CPT UI. Custom post type UI. We will install the plugin, activate the plugin. And now here in this menu item, we can add a new post type. So the settings that a post type needs are the slug, and the plural and singular label. So we're gonna go with movies now. Movie and movies, movie. And now uh, when we click on add post type button, a new post type will be registered. And as you can see in the menu, we have a new post type called movies and we can go there and add a new movie. Let's say add a new movie, uh, but Avengers. We can publish the post type. View. Let, we can see the movie, and <laughs> this is everything. I have nothing set up right now. So this is how, how you can make a custom post type the easy way. Of course, we can go back and edit the custom post type. If you could go back to the CPT UI, edit post type, select movies, and now we can change the slug. We can change the labels, or we can change other items. For example, let's see. Let's change the menu name. We should not call movies, but we shall call them my awesome movies. Okay, let's go and save post type. You can see here that we have a lot of options and this plugin makes it really easy because you have a UI that will help you make this easier. 
So after we change what we need it, we can just save the post type and now we can see here we have my awesome movies. Okay, this was the easy way to make a custom post type and this is a perfectly legitimate way. You're not less of a developer if you do it this way. I do it this way a lot of times because you don't need to reinvent the wheel every single time you make a new website. But now let's see the second way we can create a new post type and that is the hard way or the manual way. For this one we will have to use a code editor. So let's open VS Code. I will just drag it here and let's add the code needed. The first thing we need to do is to make a function that we will register in an action when WordPress is running. So let's let's call it fu function this CP, cpt. Okay. And this function should be registered, should be added to the init action. Init. And the second parameter is the name of the function, of course, without the parentheses. So now we have registered this function to be called when the init hook is run by WordPress. But now we have to call another function inside of this one. And this function is the one that will make the actual post type. And the function is reg called register underscore post underscore type. It's just like this. Stir. register post type. And now we have to get, pass it two parameters. The first parameter is the slug, or basically the way the post type should be stored in the database. And let's call it product. And the next parameter is an array. You can go with square brackets or array. I prefer square brackets because it's cleaner. So the first thing we need to add is the labels. Labels. And here is another array. So let's go an array. And the we first we have name. And we will call it product. And then the singular name for this one. After this, we will have to say if this post type is public or not. So let's go with public equals true. And let's give this custom post type an archive. Okay, so now if we go back to the website, hit refresh and you can see that we have the product. Actually, I should change this to plural. Save now product and we can add a new product. You can say this is a, this is a, this is a product. We can just publish it. We can edit it. We can view post, but you see in this manual way, all of the settings that we had already filled in by this plugin, we have to fill them out ourselves by hand. And these are just a few settings that I've written down here. You have to write absolutely all of them in order to look, to look professional. This has been the hard way, but there is another way to create a custom post type. And that is what I like to call the pro way. So let's back, go back to local by flywheel. I will open up, I will bring it back here and right click and go into the sh site shell. So here we are inside the site shell of this website. And you can see here that local by flywheel has WP CLI. This is WordPress command line interface. And what this tool does is that it automating a lot of stuff for us. It does a lot of heavy lifting. And let me show you what I mean. Now we can create a custom post type that has all the variables filled, all the fields completed, all the messages done just by writing out a command. And the command is WP from 
WPCLI scaf scaffold post type let's let's call it the post type project and this command will create a new post type that is called project but it won't create a post type actually we just give us back the code but what we can do is give it a few more parameters and it will create a file with the code written in it so first let's give it a label label equals project and theme this will save it to a theme This is my, the theme that I have active on this installation. Okay, and now this tool has created a new project PHP file inside the post type folder. And this is where the code for the new post type is. So let's go to, here is post type project, and here is all the code that it generated for us. You can see here that these are all the parameters that you can use, that you can fill in for the custom post type. And also you can see that you have the messages also completed, also filled in. So let's go and copy those two functions. Let's copy them into functions.php. Hit enter and now if we go to this one we should see another another custom post type and this is project we can add a project a new project we can add another project to it so this is my new favorite way of making custom post types now let's see how we can query the custom post type because when you are creating custom post type you may want to display them somewhere on the website so before this let us make a few more projects for example okay those are the projects so here we are in the front page.php file and we will make a new query that will get our projects the first thing that we need to do is make the arguments is write out the arguments for the query so let's make a new variable and this will be an array. Again, you can go this route, but I like to go with the square brackets because it's cleaner. So the first argument that we have to pass here is the kind of post type that we want to query, and that is project. And the second query is the how many posts per page do, do we want? So we will say that we want posts per page of Let's go with 10. And after we have written out our arguments, we should now make the new query. So let's call it query equals new WP, WP query with our arguments. Okay, now we should call the loop, right? So Let's go back into PHP here and say if the query has posts, query have posts, and now we should call the loop uh, while query have have posts query post and now we should end the while so while we have posts let's go there and in an h2 tag call the title of the post or the title of the project and now we should make an else statement if we do not have any projects in this case we should return a message that says hey there are no projects here hey 
Nope. Here. Do some work. Okay. And after this, we should end the if statement. PHP end if. And now, if we go to the main page of this website, we should see this in action. And of course, <laughs> if the text would be white, let me make it white. And now we can see the title of the post types. Because we have created only two of them, even though we have made a query for 10 posts per page, 10 projects per page in this case, we will see only three because only three we have. But if we go with only one post per page, then if we refresh, you can see here that we have only one showing. Let's make it back to 10. Okay, so now if we would delete all the project, we will get this one. And let me just show this to you. And delete all of them. And now we have this text. Hey, there are no projects here. Do some work. So this is how you query a post type. This is the most basic demonstration that I've made. You can go and query even more in depth. You can go and query with custom meta. You can go and query by uh, taxonomies and so on and so forth. But this was just a simple demonstration. Okay, we have seen now how to create a new custom post type. So let's have a look at a few best practices. Should you put your custom post type in a theme or in a plugin? Well, that depends on what you are building. If you are building a custom theme for a website, then you can put the new custom post type in the theme folders. But if you plan to change the theme in the future, then you should put it as a plugin or even as a must use plugin. Also, if you are building a theme and you plan to install it on multiple websites or even sell it on the market, then you should put the custom post types in the theme folder. That way it will help minimize the installation hassle. Okay, but should you use a plugin to do the custom post type building for you or should you write it by hand? Well, again, if you are building a theme just for a specific website or maybe for a specific client, then you can go with a plugin. You don't have to rewrite all the code for that. And even better, a plugin like custom post type UI will save the custom post type regardless of the theme. So if you change the theme, you will still have the custom post type. But if you plan on distributing the theme, either for free or by selling it, then you should write the code manually. Even better, you should use a tool like WPCLI. Okay, this has been a very short introduction into what custom post types are and how you can use them. If you have any question, comment down below. Don't forget to hit the like button and Tell me if in the future you want a more comprehensive tutorial or even crash course on custom post types. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you found a lot of value and see you next time.